In this tutorial, I wanted to show you how you can do data-driven testing with Postman. Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. It's great to have you here. This time we're going to discuss how to do data-driven tests with Postman. So let's first understand if we have like the basics around testing, first of all. This is a very simple endpoint. It is using httpbin.org and it's just good for testing, trying things out. And this is a post request. It has a JSON payload. I'm sending here name and email and you will see here in the lower part in the response, these values get here reflected. It makes it pretty easy to go then into the test tab, uh, write a few simple tests like status code is 200 or then verifying the customer name is Jake and the email is jake at example.com. So this is just the basics of writing tests in Postman. So what is the idea behind data-driven tests? The idea is that you can get a larger set of data and use the exact same request or the exact same operation that you're using, in this case, trying to create a customer, but try it with different data sets. Most of the time, just to ensure that everything works, but also sometimes just to ensure that some things do not work. Now, in this case, I'm just going to show you the principle on how to do that. This kind of testing is also known as table-driven testing. So you have like multiple names and multiple emails and you want to test them all. What happens is that Postman allows you to provide an external data file. That can be in a CSV file or in a JSON file. I'm going to show you both. And in that respective file, you can add multiple data sets, multiple rows, if you would like to view it like that, you have multiple rows in that table. Let's go ahead, open any text editor, and let's create a JSON file and see how that works. So if you're not familiar with the CSV format, it stands for comma separated values. It's something that you can easily export from Excel, and it typically more or less looks like this. In, in this case, it's going to be a very simple example. And if you're just getting started with this, I definitely recommend starting very small just to understand the concept. But if you have a large database table, something in Excel, you export it, you will have like a super long, not so easy to read CSV file. Just, just be warned in advance about that. So let's say we have here two values. So I'm going to write name and email. And this is like the table header. And you can see these are comma separated. So we can start here adding, for example, John. We have John at example.com. Everything is comma separate. So you can see here if I'm adding, for example, a new property, for example, age, uh, it will be here age 27 or something like that. Again, let's add Mary. And also Jake. Okay, so we have this data set, we saved it in a CSV file. And now I'm gonna go back to Postman and we're gonna use another tool to run this data-driven tests here. So first of all, you need to find a connection between this external data file, which apparently at this point has nothing to do with Postman and what we're sending here in the body. Once we import this file in Postman, it will automatically inject some variables into Postman and we will be able to use them. So this uses the normal double curly braces syntax for variables. So we should be already familiar with that. And the name of the variable will be, of course, exact column name that you have defined in your CSV file. Ideally, especially in the beginning, do not use anything crazy in terms of naming there. Just use something simple, no spaces, nothing else, just to try and understand how things work. So I'm just gonna use name and email. And make sure in a JSON file, in a JSON request that you have this value between double quotes if this is a string or if, for example, I'm also sending the age. This can be like this because age will be a number. So this will be then valid JSON. Okay, so it seems that now we have prepared our request. You have used these variables that will be later be injected. So if I just run this now, of course it will not work. All the tests will fail. So Practically over the wire, this will not be a valid JSON. The, only the placeholders will be sent with a request. So we still need to do something. In order to do something, we're going to go here over the collection, click on this button and select run. 
What this will do is we'll open the collection runner, and this is a built-in tool in Postman. The collection runner allows you to automatically run the collection. It will do a bit of magic, especially if you have multiple requests inside your collection to execute the request one after the other. In this case, we only have one request, but we're going to use another important functionality here. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to go to data. I'm going to select the CSV file. So my CSV file is called customer-data.csv. By the way, everything I'm talking about, including this collection and the files, will be available in the video description as links. So make sure you check that out. As soon as I've added this, you can see that it is detected as text CSV. You can even click on this preview thing and it will show us the iterations. And this is the table that we are talking about. This is like the data that we are going to use. So we're going to resend the create customer request once with the name John. The second request will be with the name Mary. And the third will be with the name Jake. And this will help us not create the same request multiple times because if the structure of the request is the same, you can definitely use this data-driven approach to test that, you know, John, Mary, Jake, all this will go through. And you'll see here the variables that we can use, name, email, and age. These are exactly the columns that you've seen in the CSV file. Now, because we want to take a look at the responses as well, I'm going to save here the responses. And yeah, let's click on this button, run customers, and see what happens. Now, you'll be able to see here that a few interesting things have happened. So first of all, now we have three iterations. Simply an iteration means a run over the entire collection. Here we have only one request, but it's the same concept. And in this run, only the respective row that we had is available. So you can see here, even one of the tests failed because the test we haven't changed the test. But it just shows that once we have sent John, once we have sent Mary, and the one where you are uh, sending Jake, that still works. So that's a positive thing. It means that what we have sent here works properly. If you're trying to understand exactly what's going on, trying to debug this, here from the collection runner, you can click on the request name itself. And for example, you can inspect the request body. And you'll be able to see here that all the values have been replaced to whatever we have created in the external CSV file. This automation step can be easily done in Newman. Newman is the command line tool for Postman. You can use Newman to integrate with a CI CD server like Jenkins or GitLab CI, TeamCity, and many, many more. It's not the purpose of this tutorial. I just want to show you like how to create these files and how they work. Typically, if they work in the collection runner, most likely you will have absolutely no issues to getting them to run in Newman as well. So let's go back to the tests. And as you can notice here, we, we are still hard coded on the name Jake and this thing. And in case you're trying to do something like this, like writing name here, I can assure you this will definitely not work. This kind of syntax is not directly supported in scripts, not in this way. So what we'll typically do is we're going to use the PM API. This is where everything that's available in Postman can be accessed. And to access this kind of data, this is called iteration data. So I'm going to write here pm.iteration data. I'm going to use the method get. And I'm going to get here the name. I'm going to get here the name because this is the name of the column. And the same thing, I'm going to just simply copy this and replace it in the value. So what we're doing here is that we're making our test dynamic as well. And this is also super important. So it's not only about what we're sending, but also because we're doing testing, it's also about getting this value. And you can put like expected values in your files. For example, if you have an expected status code, you can write something like a column that you call expected status. You can put in the value and you can replace, for example, the 200 with pm.iterationData.get status code. So, this can make any part of your scripts totally dynamic and Postman will feed this information into variables so that you can use it anywhere. So it really doesn't depend. You can use these variables anywhere in headers, in the body, in parameters, all over the place inside Postman. You can use these variables without any issues. So let's go back to the collection runner and see if it now works properly, if all the tests are working. All you have to do is go here back on the collection runner and let's click on run customers again. 
you will see here we have six tests that have passed and now all the tests are dynamic and are working properly. The exact same thing can be done with the JSON file. So let me quickly exemplify that as well. So in the JSON file, you need to understand a bit how the JSON structures look like. We're going to work here with an array. So this is what these square brackets do. And inside that array, we're going to have multiple objects. So these curly braces define in JSON what an object is. And we can also add the exact same properties here. But this time, I'm going to do it in this way. I'm going to have here name, make, mail. Okay, so this is the first object and we have to add a comma separation here. So this is the first object, this is the second object, and this is the third object. It's super important that you write here a valid JSON file, otherwise it will not work. And yeah, I'm just playing around with the data. It doesn't really matter at this point. But now I have saved this file as customer dash data.json. This is a valid JSON file, so it's important to use a valid JSON file, otherwise Postman will not recognize it. Let's go back to the collection runner. So here inside the collection runner, I'm going to select another file. Now I have the customer data with the JSON format. I'm not sure if I've written everything properly. Again, I can click on this preview. You will see it looks exactly the same. Now, in case you're wondering why you should use a JSON file, the reason for the JSON file is that it allows you to create much more complex data structures. And while inside CSV, it's going to be pretty hard if you need to submit some JSON or like you have objects or anything like that. CSV works well if you don't have any other options or if your data is really super simple, like I've shown in this case. But with JSON, you can really have nested objects and really complex data structures. So I, if you can, and if you're creating these files on your own, definitely go with JSON. It will be much easier to edit, much easier to manage. And on the long term, if you need to create more complex requests, JSON is definitely the way to go. As you can see, I've executed this. It works as before. These files, everything that I showed in this tutorial will be available for you to download without any issues in the video description. I hope this tutorial was helpful. It gave you this quick introduction to data-driven tests in Postman. And if that was the case, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this. And of course, if you have any questions, if something did not work or whatever you're working on is much more complex than this is, and I'm sure it probably is, and you cannot find a solution, just let me know in the comment section below. I would be more than happy to help you and I would be more than happy to create other tutorials that explain how to do data-driven testing in Postman for more complex examples. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.